Uh, right, we're approaching the end of the programme. It's approaching five to nine. We're going to talk about a rare gull, a seagull in Cambridgeshire, a very rare one, which caused lots of excitement in the birdwashing community last weekend, with hundreds of twitchers flocking to see it. So this Cape Gull bird was spotted. I mean, it looks like a seagull to me, but we will find out more. Uh, this was at Grafham Water Reservoir. It's very similar to the UK's own gull species, as we can see, uh, but is mostly found in the southern hemisphere. That's what makes it exceptional. It's the first time it's been spotted here in the UK. So wildlife photographer James Hanlon was so keen to see it for himself uh, that he left his family holiday in North Yorkshire to drive four hours to the reservoir. He uh, joins us now from there. James, morning to you. Thanks very much for talking to us this morning. It's a beautiful morning there. Um, why did you feel so strongly that you left the family holiday to come and see the bird? Yeah, morning, Roger. Um, it was a first for Britain and it, it doesn't really get much better than that, to be honest. Um, it's an extremely rare bird. The, the irony of it is that it's only sort of 25 minutes from my home and here I was up in Yorkshire sort of, uh, three and a half, four hours away. Um, I knew I couldn't wait till the end of the week because it could go at any point. So uh, I shot down here and saw it. So, so, so before we move on to talk a bit more about the bird and why it was there, just, just talk us through the, uh, the, the conversation as it was with you and, uh, and your other half, how you sold it and, and how you managed to get the green light to go. <laughs> It's a well-rehearsed conversation. Um, she is actually quite quite used to this with me. Uh, I have shot off before. Unfortunately, with uh, birds of you know this rare, you've got no idea how long they're going to hang around for. Uh, if you really want to see it, you have to jet off straight away. It could be there for minutes, could be there for hours, or it could be there for days or weeks. Um, but she realised it was a, a pretty special one, so um, I got the green light. Oh, Mrs. Hanlon is a good woman. Um, just explain about the bird. Oh, really? I was just going to say about your wife. Well, yeah, sorry, I missed that. Oh, so I, said, that I said she's a good woman. I thought you said the best. Oh, she is, yeah. Oh, she's that's the best. lovely. <laughs> um, but the bird in and it's, of itself then, so you left the family. She was very understanding. What does it feel like? Because to us, they look like very similar birds. We just showed a comparison with the gulls that we're used to. Can you describe that buzz when you see it? Uh, it's been a sort of long anticipated moment, really, because this species has long been predicted to, to turn up in the UK. Um, I'm quite interested in gulls myself. I used to do a lot of watching uh, of them locally. Uh, scanning through the flocks, you know, looking for the rare one that never really materialised. There's a handful of very, very rare species, some which have not yet occurred here, but are, you know, on people's radar, they're expected to make it here one day. They're often very, very subtle looking birds. And you've always sort of got that in your head, you know, if you, if you pick one out, um, that will be the one. And full credit to the guy who found it, because it's a subtle looking bird, even to most birders, it doesn't stand out. It was overlooked by a couple when it, when it first turned up. They didn't know what it was. Um, the differences from our, our own goals are very, very minor. Um, but full credit to the guy who found it. He realised it was uh, that little bit different. He realised what it was and he got the photos out very quickly and the identification was confirmed. Um, for me to see it was just a great feeling because, um, you know, I've, I've, I've known that one day we would get one. Uh, it was just great for it to be sort of fairly close to home and in a great spot where, which was accessible to people and the bird was showing well at close range. Didn't have to look at it at sort of a few hundred yards range, you know. Um, and just can can we read anything, James, into why it's finally appeared in this country? Uh, well, records are increasing. Uh, we think this one has come, although it's it's mainly a southern hemisphere species. We think this one has come from a a small sort of emerging population in north north uh, West Africa uh, around Morocco. Um, in the last sort of twenty or thirty years, we've been getting a few records in Western Europe, which are thought to come from there. There's been a few around Spain and Portugal, particularly, uh, and a couple have reached Paris, and that's why we knew this bird would would one day get to the UK. Um, so that's where we think it's come from. Um, its molt cycle—that's the replacement of its feathers—is following a northern hemisphere pattern, whereas 
most of them have a different timing because the seasons down south in the southern hemisphere yeah. are different. This one is showing a pattern uh, more akin to our goals in the northern hemisphere. And that's why we think it's come from a more northerly population in North Africa. Brilliant. Well, James, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. We, we are really grateful to you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us, telling us all about the Cape Gull. And James, interestingly, I mean, we say he's a keen photographer. He actually wrote the book UK 500 Birding in the Fast Lane, which is all about gulls. Exciting. Congratulations to him yeah. and to the family who got him back after the Mrs. holiday. Mrs. Hanlon got him back for the rest of the holiday, <laughs> which is good to know. Uh, that is it from breakfast today.